up the DMV. This is DC News Now. A live look outside at the Capitol building. And we are done with this false fall. It is over. Heat and humidity is now moving into the DMV. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us at 9. I'm Susan Tran. And hi, everybody. I'm Chris Flanagan. All right, we've got live team coverage tonight as we prepare for the stifling heat tomorrow. That'll be a DMV first warm day. DC News Now's Daniel Hamburg live at a rec center in Northwest where you can ways you can beat the heat. That's right. But first, we're going to head right over to Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb. And Janessa, not only are we talking about the feels like being in the triple digits, but storms moving in. Yeah, we do have a double dose of heat and humidity that is going to be roaring to that triple digit territory. And then later in your day tomorrow, uh, we do have a storm system that's already impacting uh, the Midwest currently. Right now, we are actually sitting under mostly clear skies. And so this is going to be a very nice morning across the DMV, but really the heat starts to be very noticeable going into about 11 to that noon hour. And that's why heat advisories they will start at one o'clock uh, where a feel like temperature moves in about 105 for DC and surrounding counties. I do have some isolated spots that I am forecasting potential of 107 to 110. So there's some likelihood these advisories they get upgraded to a heat excessive heat warning temperatures right now we're into the 70s and 80s mostly the 80s uh, with humidity levels in the 60s and so it makes things very uncomfortable. It's really muggy and tropical air that has pushed in from the south. Uh, this is North and South Carolina air that has settled in across the DMV. So a steamy start. Uh, really, most spots going to be sitting near 80 degrees uh, for your early morning commute. It's not just here in the DMV. This is a, an expansive heat dome that's building along with air quality concerns that now have moved into parts of the deep south and uh, the center of the country. We have this front. It's going to cause some severe weather. I'll tell you what impacts to expect uh, for your Wednesday evening coming up. Okay, Janessa, thanks. Meanwhile, parts of the region now under an air quality watch right now. Here's a live look. This is Roslyn, Virginia uh, this evening. People with asthma, heart disease, other lung diseases, and the elderly all want to be alert. Officials say try to minimize any outdoor activity. There's also a heat advisory in place for tomorrow, sending lots of people out today to get in that workout or some court time. DC News Now's Daniel Hamburg live for us there at the Kennedy Rec Center in Northwest. And Daniel, so how did folks handle the heat and humidity today? Well, Susan, if you thought today was hot, just buckle up for tomorrow. A lot of people out on the playground today, but I'm sure a lot of them will want to find some air conditioning tomorrow. For those who called last week a false fall, we're now in a second summer. Yeah, it's over the weather for sure. But it's so hot, my chest is sweating. While temperatures are back in the 90s, kids are still enjoying time outside after school or trying to. The heat, it gets to me a lot because I hate being in the heat, sweating, running, and then I'm hot. These splash pads are a nice reprieve. It's hot as hell out here. Tomorrow's going to be even hotter. Drink lots of water. I prefer coconut water over regular water. Lanisha Littleton's description of this summer is simple. Hot, aggravating, hot. Over at the skate park, these guys prefer the hot to the cold. But they're sweating up a storm. Man, I feel like I need an energy drink and uh, maybe a new shirt. <laughs> As we prepare for potential feels like temperatures in the triple digits again, Many are hoping for cooler days ahead. I'll say the cold over the heat anytime. For now, some words of wisdom from Jaden. It's hot in Florida, so I gotta tell you something. Drink a lot of water. And drink a lot of water. Very good advice from these kids out here today. The good news is a lot of those kids are in school now that they're back in session this week, so they won't be outside for too much of the day. But uh, be careful because it is going to be hot tomorrow. We're live in Northwest. Daniel Hamburg, DC News Now. All right, meanwhile, investigators back in the Masses Park, Virginia home of Naresh and Monty Coffley bought today. They spent about two hours there. You can see here yellow crime scene tape is around that home. Police also leave it with several evidence bins as well. There's also a crime scene unit van back in the driveway there. Uh, the rush bot was denied bond on Monday. He is charged with concealing a body. Right now, the search continues for his wife, who's been missing for nearly a month. New tonight in D.C., a former district dogs worker is charged with animal cruelty. 
accused of kicking a dog to death. Investigators say it happened in February when Adriano Demores was working overnight there at the Navy Yard location. He's accused of kicking a five-month-old puppy, Brawny, while he was feeding the dogs. Demores says that he was trying to calm the puppy, but Brawny became unconscious and then later died at the vet. If convicted, Demores faces five years in prison, and these charges happened six months after 10 dogs drowned when the Northeast location flooded. Well, developing now at 9 o'clock in Prince George's County, an elementary school teacher there charged with sex abuse of a child. He taught right there at Cooper Lane in Landover Hills. DC News Now's Tim Reed spoke with a former student who is in disbelief. Some residents living in this community near Cooper Lane Elementary School tell us they are angry and disgusted about the allegations facing teacher Mark Cobb. Um, this was actually very shocking for me because I never would have thought that he would do something like this and because I think that I was very shocked because he was always nice to me and he was always nice to most of his students and I was very shocked when I heard the news. The word has quickly spread throughout this community in Landover Hills about 44 year old Mark Cobb who taught at Cooper Lane Elementary School for five years. Angie Funes says Cobb taught her in the second grade. She and her mother can't believe it. I think that if someone does stuff like this, I think that they should go to jail and learn that this is not okay because school is a safe zone for some kids and this shouldn't be happening in most schools. Detectives arrested Cobb Monday after recovering items from his house. He faces charges of sexual abuse of a minor and possession of child pornography. But uh, it is so sad. It, it, it just doesn't make sense. The teacher and little kids like that, they are molesting them and, and bothering them. Uh, it really makes me sad. The suspect allegedly was texting a female former student who was under the age of 10. During that time, police tell us Cobb received sexually inappropriate pictures of the victim. But they should be put in prison and kept in prison. Because if you did it then, when you come out, you probably would do it again. Investigators are asking anyone with more information on this case to call police. In Prince George's County, Tim Reed, DC News Now. Such disturbing details, Tim. Thank you. Four people, including two teens, are charged with stealing dozens of firearms from gun stores all across Maryland in Prince George's, Baltimore, and Anne Arundel counties. Investigators say they would then sell them on the streets. Maryland's attorney general announcing these charges, and here's security video from the March 4th incident where they failed to get any guns. But investigators say over several months, they had stolen 81 firearms. In one case, police say the suspects broke into one gun store in Capitol Heights several times. When these guns fall into the hands of those who are banned from possessing them, that's what creates the greatest danger in our community. Investigators say they've only recovered six of these dozens that were stolen and five were found in the district with teens and people banned from having a gun. All four suspects are being charged as adults and they'll be held without bail. Well, in the district, Mayor Muriel Bowser discussing the latest tourism numbers today as DC tries attracting more people to downtown. Data shows roughly 26 million people visited DC last year. That resulted in 120,000 jobs being created and the city is now gearing up to attract even more visitors from all over the world for the inauguration of the president and also World Pride 2025. Oh, the energy around the city of people coming back in our downtown, in our hotels, in our restaurants, enjoying our activities and events. And it feels really, really good uh, in D.C. Well, visitors spent a record $10 billion last year, which helped the city reach $2 billion in tax revenue. Some of those visitors might find our streets a little confusing. <laughs> Developing now, big changes could be on the way for drivers in the district. The National Park Service is considering ending the reversible lanes there on Potomac and Rock Creek Parkway. Yeah, our reporter Mario Carbone following the story for us tonight. Mariel, right now, you can only drive in one direction during certain times of the day. 
Uh, yeah, Chris, we're talking about those morning rush hours, 645 to 930, and then again in the evening, 345 to 630. All four of these lanes behind me here, they all drive in the same way. The idea here, getting commuters in and out of the city more quickly, but a new study, it's looking at some safety concerns on the roadway here. Every weekday, it's like clockwork. At 345, Park Police shutting down two-way traffic and redirecting cars along Rock Creek and Potomac Parkway. It's brutal, brutal. I don't have time for this. One-way traffic during morning and evening rush hours was established in 1937, one year after the roadway was completed. It's a way to relieve commuter congestion, creating a four-way thoroughfare that moves thousands of cars through D.C. every day. But that pattern could soon change. The Department of Transportation, along with the National Park Service, releasing this study, which looks at eliminating one-way traffic during peak commuter hours. In the study, focused on how safe the current system is. I don't object in principle to the idea of, of the reversible lanes. I do worry that the signage uh, is sometimes not sufficient. According to the study, one-way reversible traffic can be difficult for drivers to safely navigate. It puts park police in vulnerable positions and has a disproportionately high rate of crashes than during bi-directional traffic. You just have to know the area and how things are going uh, with the traffic patterns. And Donald Rossi, who takes Rock Creek Parkway daily, says the roadway, as is, has its challenges. But he worries about increased congestion if things were to change. With the switching off, they're able to get people in and out of the city very quickly. And so the study, it concludes that uh, the safety benefits from eliminating those reversible roadways would outweigh any of the congestion issues it could potentially cause. The National Park Service, it is planning some public uh, comment and feedback sessions, and they'll also be asking about some other planned safety improvements along Rock Creek Parkway. Uh, those will happen later this year coming up in the winter. Reporting live in Northwest tonight, I'm Arielle Carbone, DC News Now. All right, we will wait and see, Marielle. Thank you. It is said to be a very busy weekend of travel, and Virginia State Police are hoping that everyone will be safe. It's especially important, they say, because it has been such a deadly start to the summer, with 25 people killed in crashes there in the Commonwealth since Memorial Day. And the agency wants to bring down those numbers, and they're warning everyone there will be more officers on the roads throughout this long weekend.